very good evening to one and all present over here. I'm glad that Madam Professor Celia Senas has invited me for this wonderful occasion of International uh, Summit 2021. Uh, the topic for deliberation for today by me will be a framework for cost benefit analysis to improve resiliency of energy system. I would like to say that there are May various frameworks suggested by various people, various industries. But why resiliency is important? We know that high impact, low frequency events are very, very dangerous. So resiliency is going to include the ability to harden the power system against and quick recover from these high impact, low frequency events. Such events, they threaten the lives, they usually disable the communities and divorce the generation, transmission and distribution system. As well as uh, some of the transportation, fuel transportation and communication is disturbed. Some of you can enlist like natural events like hurricanes, uh, flooding, tornadoes, severe geomagnetic disturbances, GMDs, like Solar storms, they have uh, demonstrated their ability to disrupt the power grid in 1989. We have uh, watched, we have uh, visualized the lead GMD has led to the collapse of hydrocubic trans energy interconnection, leaving 6 million people without power for nine hours. So many more like EMP and pandemic, these are severely affecting our power system. Other trends and the events in the last decades, what we have further shaped the need for enhancing the resiliency are like digitalization of society and shifting consumer expectation, like anticipated severe shortage of fuels or water for power generation, weather impact on growing variable generations, Growing dependence on natural gas for electric power, vulnerability of extreme cold weather condition, the list is not ending here, many more are there. Now, how these are interconnected, resiliency, flexibility, and connectivity. Low impact and low frequency event, they are impacting resiliency, like I mentioned, extreme weather, earthquake, and man-made outage physical, cyber, or maybe coordinated. Whereas flexibility, fuel price is one, which is going to affect. And when we talk about flexibility, flexibility refers to power system ability to adapt to the changing conditions while providing safe electricity, reliability, which is can be afforded by a normal man. Several factors are driving the requirement of flexibility in both supply and management. So fuel price is one of them. Power market price incentive is another. Variable generation. Yes, regulation and policy also. One of the uncertainties and consumer behavior is also adding to it. So flexibility is to adopt the changing conditions which are uncertain. Connectivity, when we talk, interoperability across the electricity enterprise is important. Like we can have a two-way flow of communication. We have mobile devices for uh, resuming our um, um, resiliency for grid uh, modernization. We need connectivity. We need advanced sensor to have a robust power system. When we talk about this power system resiliency, three elements plays a vital role. That is damage prevention, that is robustness or hardening the system. Second is the system recovery and third is the survivability. So damage is how can we can prevent this damage. In the application of engineering design, we have to have advanced technology that is going to make our system robust so that the damage is limited. And we talk about system recovery, then we need to use the tools and the technology and techniques to restore the system 
as soon as possible in a practical manner. So here we can see these are some assessment need to be made when we go for system recovery. When we go for survivability, then it is a use of innovative technologies to lead to aid the consumers and also uh, communities, institutions, and wherever they are used, the technology is used, how innovatively these technology can bring back, can work normal, even though in abnormal conditions. When we talk about power system, four component, four pillars, we just can't forget. That is generation, transmission, distribution, and not the less consumer system. So the improvement can address the need of robust system against recovery from enhancement of survivability of the effect of low frequency events, but high impact events. And there is a point, the need of resiliency. When I say generation, we need to have fuel supply. We should have fuel storage. We need to have proper fuel transportation, grid integration, and like when we talk about transmission, then bell storage, smart grid, and bulk system operations. Likewise, we have distribution, distributed storage, distributed generation, smart grid. These are going to take care, must be taken care in the distribution. And in the consumer system, smart grid, thermal storage, distributed generation, distributed storage must be taken care of. When we talk about what is cost benefit analysis, in, for resiliency, we know that it is now the growing trend, the critical need for enhancing resiliency in electric power sector. There's a no standard framework for assessing resiliency level or evaluating the potential option for improvement. So the goal of it is to prevent damage, recover and survive, and is to limit the associated cost. So a flexible framework for cost benefit analysis is going to help um, to evaluate or prioritize the investment to improve the power system reliable resiliency and uh, to weigh their value relative to other users of scarce capital. When I say EPA has developed a general framework for such analysis to inform utility grid investment in addition to typical challenges which are related to infrastructure investment. It can be a decision that can be imported this uh, distinction when considered resiliency. So I said earlier also, it introduces new complexity. When we talk about resiliency, we, we, if we go with the innovation, then the complexity increases and it's due to emerging risk in changing, not only in natural, social, but also in the economic environment. So it's a methodology. Cost benefit analysis is a methodology and it is used by several companies in order to invest or in estimate what is the likely cost and the benefits of their subjected projects. So CBA is going to employ several tools for addressing uncertain outcomes and values, including sensitivity, probability, and break-even analysis. There are four approaches in determining the CBA. That is nothing but engineering uh, estimate, and another is parametric model, another is uh, analogy estimate and Dalphi method. So when we go for medium uh, projects, small to medium projects, they do not, which are not going to take a longer time to complete it, their benefit analysis is going to perform good. And in uh, there are uh, these cases uh, where, where the project length is less, analysis can guide those involved in making the right decisions. However, when the project is large and long-term project, that can be problematic. And uh, once it is a problematic, then uh, in terms, how it is problematic in terms of cost benefit analysis. So the aim of the cost, including the investment, um, activities, what is the market need and expenses. So all those things has to be taken care of. When we go for uh, various approaches for conducting the cost benefit analysis, several steps need to be followed 
we can take it as a step or we can take it that these are mandate need to be done before uh, going for any project that is de defining the project goal and objectives then determining the alternatives who will be my stakeholders determining the outcome of the costs and benefits then identifying classifying what is the cost and what is the benefit your lot of calculations are there behind it with the matrix what we are going to find out what conclusions we are getting then we are going to set up the time for cost and benefit then what is the discount cost and the benefit to obtain the present value then finding out the net present value of the project and sensitivity analysis is mandatory then final decision making so these are the various approaches for conducting the cost benefit analysis so if i uh, conclude then i can say that uh, cost benefit analysis based on future projections that may may not come true as a result cba model include a significant amount of uncertainty and cba models can account for uncertainty and uh, variability like various natural disasters and the fluctuation in prices so sensitivity analysis is used in cba model to evaluate the model underlying what are the assumptions taken by the model and see that how changing these assumptions can affect the project outcomes right so resilience uh, who are uh, practice uh, who are practicing this have made a lot of progress uh, in recent years towards measuring and quantifying the benefits of resilience in ventures so separately not well established best practices the method exists for monetizing benefits so that they can be compared to cost right marrying with the economic analysis to the big emerging from the field of resilience measurements it allows resilient practices and research to develop an understanding for cost effectiveness and for their interventions and these are few references i took for my presentation thank you so much